It's going to require billions of gallons of sustainable aviation fuel. The four areas we picked here, green hydrogen, sustainable aviation fuels. So more sustainable aviation fuel, more stuff is coming on stream. And we see more agreements being signed. So there is momentum. We can't imagine a world without flight. Um, SAF is the most important tool in our arsenal. We are decades away from commercial electric flights. In the meantime, sustainable fuels are crucial as airlines race towards net zero. There's going to be a role for electric and hydrogen in some portions of the aviation industry. But the reality is we're going to fly big airplanes long distances and we're going to need jet fuel to do that. The focus on sustainability is, is top of the agenda. And for us, sustainable aviation fuel is going to be the biggest part of our transition from where we are to that net zero target. Sustainable aviation fuel taking off across the globe. I've set a goal of zero carbon for aviation sector, for example, by 2050. I've spoken with the leading heads of all major airlines. It's going to require billions of gallons of sustainable aviation fuel. And you simply can't get to net zero by 2050 without biofuels. You don't need to take my word for it. Take the word of the CEO of American Airlines who said, sustainable aviation fuel is the cornerstone of our strategy, end of quote. To bring that future within reach, I proposed a sustainable aviation fuel tax that we brought together the government's agencies, aircraft manufacturers, airlines, fuel producers, airports, advanced, cleaner, and more sustainable fuels for American aviation. That's how we're going to get there. And we can. So over this ne next decade, we need all the green technologies uh, that you know can reduce in every type of emission uh, to get to where solar and wind are. The four areas we picked here, green hydrogen, sustainable aviation fuel, storage and direct air capture are at a much earlier stage where they have a very high green premium, but by designing scale up projects with catalyst capital, uh, and government uh, capital, we will learn, uh, you know, deploy these innovations, pick the right approach and get that premium down uh, in the same way happening in those other areas. Catalyst capital will be uh, as a percentage, not the big piece. The government money uh, will be there. And then as we've said, as the green premium gets to a low level, that's when you unless unleash market-driven investment. And that's when you go from, you know, B billions to T trillions. I'm not frightened about where the money's coming from. I just want to make sure that we have the science and technology and the viability. Once we know that, the capital will be there. Is that just ESG money or is that any risk-seeking capital regardless of, you know, what the people behind it think about climate risk? We may not even have ESG investing anymore because ESG is just another risk characteristic of like everything else we have. And I, so I so I would I would say uh, all investors where they see an opportunity to invest in projects that will transform a society that has great upside, the amount of capital uh, will be there. If we can prove the technology and the technology works, if we bring down uh, in, a, in, a, in a substantive way the green premium, the capital will be there. And I don't care how we define the capital. There will be, it'll be capital seeking opportunities to make a good risk adjusted return for the investors. Uh, you know, we cannot imagine a world without planes. We sort of lived a little bit of this during COVID when everybody stopped flying and it was unacceptable. <laughs> so we can't imagine a world without 
flight, and yet uh, we can't live with the pollution that it produces. So SAF is the most important tool in our arsenal to be able to address this sector, and it's why a year ago the U.S. government did launch our SAF Grand Challenge, which was uh, an audacious and achievable goal of meeting 100% of jet fuel demand with SAF by 2050. Plus, obviously, we have the private sector on our side with dozens of airlines that are committed to to buy SAF as soon as it's produced or who have made decisions on their own to produce it themselves. Demand is not our problem on here. It is it is supply. And of course, the Inflation Reduction Act provides some great incentives for the production of sustainable aviation fuel between $1.25 up to $1.75 per gallon. That's a great incentive, right? So we got we can do this now. So over the past year, we have consulted with the private sector. We've consulted with transportation experts to develop uh, this roadmap about how we can um, can scale sustainable aviation fuel uh, on a commercial scale. We're targeting production by 2030 of 3 billion gallons and then by uh, 35 billion by uh, 2050. 35 billion, which is the full aviation sector. That's the goal. We are decades away from commercial electric flights. In the meantime, sustainable fuels are crucial as airlines race towards net zero. Well, Avril Hong is standing by live at the International Air Transport Association in Geneva with more. Avril. I spoke to Willie Walsh, Director General of IATA, and started by asking him to what extent these higher costs will likely weigh on carriers in the year ahead. The focus on sustainability is, is top of the agenda. In fact, during 2022 and indeed 2021, the industry used every single drop of sustainable fuel that was available. Despite the very high premium of sustainable fuel over traditional jet kerosene, now that premium has narrowed, but that's mainly because jet kerosene prices have been elevated. But still, it's more than twice uh, to, you know, the price of uh, jet kerosene sustainable fuels today, and it's been as high as four times. Uh, so despite that very significant additional cost, airlines continue to uh, commit to buying sustainable fuels because we recognize that we have to have a credible path to achieving net zero in 2050. And for us, sustainable aviation fuel is going to be the biggest part of our transition from where we are to that net zero target. Today, United Airlines is making history. This airplane, this engine, will be the first flight in history running on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. You know, there's going to be a role for electric and hydrogen in some portions of the aviation industry, small airplanes flying short distances. But the reality is we're going to fly big airplanes long distances, and we're going to need jet fuel to do that. I mean, you're putting a lot of money into SAF. Yeah. You're putting a lot of money into investment. We are. It's a crucial part of your policy yeah. with United. Yeah. And, and look, we think that this is part of building and creating the industry. And the analogy I like to use is wind and solar. 20 years ago, just 20 years ago, when you talked about wind and solar replacing a coal-powered plant, people said it's impossible because wind and solar are so much more expensive. Today, it's cheaper almost everywhere in the world to use wind and solar, but that's because there was investment and government support, a critical area here. The latest legislation here in the United States does have that in it, but it's critical to do it. Just like they supported the wind and solar industries, it is critical to drive investment and give people confidence. These are big investments, 20-year investments, confidence that they're going to be able to get their money back us. Uh, joining me today all the way from London is Jan Tachka, who is the president of Shell Aviation. Jan, welcome. Thank you very much. So how has the conversation around SAF evolved since the last GBTA convention when we were together in Orlando? What's the current state of play? The conversation has evolved from in the beginning, it was predominantly amongst the leading airlines. Um, it was airlines and industry, I should say, corporate flyers. It has evolved from there into a conversation very broad, many, many more people, many, many more companies involved. 
Uh, it has helped that the IATA has declared the aim to be net zero by 2050, very clearly. Okay. We also see on the supply side, we see more supply coming on stream, so more sustainable aviation fuel, more stuff is coming on stream. And we see more agreements being signed. So Good. there is momentum, which is, which is really helpful. So talk about what Shell's doing. I mean, can you expand a little bit about that? Absolutely. In particular? That is pretty much along those three points I just mentioned. Um, on the one hand, we keep supply, we keep investing in our supply production. So we're building a plant, a bio plant in Rotterdam. We will be building the next one in Singapore. We're looking at two plants in the US, another one in Europe. So on the supply side, investments are coming. Uh, we also have started signing agreements, okay. two handful of agreements, starting very soon to, to, to deliver a sustainable aviation fuel. Um, and again, we are engaging, as you can see here on GBTA, we are engaging with the wider industry. The, the, the corporate industry, the corporate travelers, they, they need to understand and they sometimes, I think, underestimate how much influencing, how much purchase power they have, influencing mm, power. So they could buy more stuff, send clear demand signals, you know, buying stuff comes at a higher cost. We realize this and it's not easy, but it would help if it's no longer seen only as a cost disadvantage, but also as a, as a tool, as a lever to decarbonize and your corporate carbon intensity will become over time a competitive advantage. The, I can say, the cleaner you run your operations, the cleaner you run your house, the cleaner your people travel, the more competitively you will be advanced in comparison to others. And that lens is a new lens, and, and that is something the corporate industry, they should, they should hopefully see it from that side. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a real pioneer in this industry and innovator, Mr. Pat Gruber, CEO of Jivo. Jivo is all about net zero footprint jet fuel. Net zero, I said, or negative, carbon negative. How can that be achieved? Document the data, report it transparently, lay it out in the open. It's called Verity Tracking. It's a blockchain-based technology, and we're going to track everything and just report it openly. It is what it is, and we're going to improve from there because that's what sustainability is. We already have more than 350 million gallons pre-sold. We have a lot of plants to build. Our first one we broke ground on last week in Lake Preston, South Dakota. It's going to produce about 55 million gallons of SAF, about 6 million gallons of gasoline and diesel fuel. It'll produce about 20 million pounds of protein, 35, 40 million pounds of vegetable oil. And it is going to be powered by wind, biogas, off the grid. Thanks. Sustainable aviation fuel taking off across the globe. 